G'day. A long shot today because I've been making big things. These are a pair of trusses that I've been making up. Uh, I've, I want to suspend something uh, and pivot it off a wall. Now, in my case, it's a camera, but um, you know, lots of places I've worked at have had a, a beam, a um, truss, whatever, uh, hinged off the wall with a with a power point dangling off the end, so that you've then got a movable power point. Now, if you haven't got a shed where um, you know you have an overhead power point, and you think one would be nice rather than having cords dra uh, dragging across the floor, then uh, this is this is possibly an option. Um, these things were um, interesting to make, and so I'll show you the process about that. And at the end of the video, I was going to uh, just do a bit of a comparison between a straight um, tube and uh, one of these things, just to show how much stiffer it is. Before I go too much further, um, some of you may not realise what the difference between a truss and a beam is, particularly as trusses can be used as beams. Basically, a beam is just a, a piece of material, uh, and you know, typically is an I beam, supported somehow um, with load on. And so, what happens is that you know, if you've got a load on it like that, you know, you'll, you'll get this thing; it'll deflect something like that, probably. A truss is is you know, two members, could be more, uh, with bracing in between, and. If you load this thing properly, so load it on the nodes where the where the bracing meets, these sort of pieces are in either compression or in tension. Uh, makes them very strong, uh, particularly if they're, they're short enough that they don't buckle. And so because you've got some material here and some material here and it's rigidly supported between, it's effectively having a beam of that depth. And so it makes them much much stronger. You can make this stuff out of light material, as uh, as I'm I'm, I'm going to. Um, gives you great rigidity, all that sort of thing. Uh, these are used for roofs. Um, you know, you you get this happening like this. Whatever uh, for houses, that sort of stuff. So yeah, a truss is is I guess you'd say it's a more efficient way of of using material to to take the same loading. Um, so I'm using a truss because uh, I, I just want it to be, you know, reasonably rigid and not, not shake around and all that sort of thing. There are two ways to make up the truss and one is to, to you know, do that fish mouth thing um, where one tube fits over the other and I might end up doing that for uh, some of the, uh, the joints so I can run cables and things through the tube. But the other way of doing it is basically drilling a hole into the larger tube uh, and then putting the smaller tube in and welding around and that'll give you uh, that, that uh, well an equivalent joint I guess you'd call it. Now to do that I want to make up a jig so I've got two pieces of plastic here which I've just hinged and that's around about where the centre of my 25mm uh, hole is going to be. Uh, this is a piece of stunt tubing I can't find the, uh, the short piece I was saving particularly for this but that's going to go there and then I can come in and drill uh, my 16 diameter um, hole in there for the for the hole saw. To get a nice tight fit on here what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to wedge that open a little bit with a it's a bit of business card um, I'm going to wedge that open and then bore my hole in there and that means that when that card is removed that will be a tight fit on that tube and so it'll stop it rotating and all the rest of the stuff so uh, that'll go into the forejaw and uh, um, I'll bore that out. This is a piece of the tube that I intend to uh, drill into and uh, I've finished boring this out uh, and it, it it grabs, you know, it's it's what it should be. I think in hindsight maybe a, an extra layer of uh, material would have been better. The other thing is to have it having something to clamp that tight. It was slipping out the lathe chuck a bit and probably in, in hindsight I should have put the, uh, the tie bolts that I'm going to use to hold that together in there but I wasn't quite sure where I was going to, uh, to put things. Uh, I've put a bit of masking tape on here and now I'm going to, to plot out where my uh, 16 diameter 16 hole is going to go and uh, then I can then I can put those uh, bolt holes in there but I can also work out how I'm going to um, do that with the uh, with the hole saw. This is going to have to go over to the mill of course to get that, that hole drilled in and uh, according to the drawing also I need to put a, a flat on there but I need to know where the hole is going to end up so um, what I'm, I'm going to do is just uh, using the squares and things, mark that out 
and uh, and go from there. I've spoken before how handy it is to have a circle template in the uh, in the workshop, uh, and this is just another way uh, it'll it'll help out. I've got a triangle of material here. I've got a hole going through there, and I'm going to relieve that just so I have a, a flat surface. But I want a hole in there for a bolt, and I want it in in so I've got maximum con uh, material, you know, all around the hole. So using the circle template, I can actually go along and try out various holes. And I've done this before, so I know it's a ten but I can actually put a, a diameter 10 hole there. And the center of that is equispaced from this line, this line, and, and, and that line. And so if I put a, a diameter six or even a diameter eight hole in there, I know I'm actually gonna miss all the things that I'm, I'm trying to miss. So uh, there's another use for it. I've set up my block here and taken off a 45 degree chamfer. Uh, now I'm going to put the hole in for the 16 millimeter um, hole saw. Now that bit there measures just smidge under 15. This bit here with the, the relief for the teeth is what gives it its, its uh, 3 8 you know, um, type thing. So what I'm going to do is drill a 15 mil hole here and then once I've done that clamp everything up and then bring the, the hole saw back to give me my, my clearance for the teeth. And I'm hoping that will give me um, a jig that will will give me an accurate location for a, a 16 mil hole saw, uh, and uh, so be able to put the holes in my uh, my tube for the for the braces. Here's the jig. Um, so a hole for the main uh, piece of aluminium, and uh, I'll take the drill bit out when I when I use this so that I don't have to worry about coming right back here. But uh, I then clamp that up and and pull that back, and you can possibly just see there's a slight um, scratched up area there, just a little bit bigger in diameter, and that's uh, where the, the saw teeth uh, on the whole saw manage to uh, you know, make themselves some clearance. So that gives me, um, it's not you know, a highly tight fit, but it certainly gives me a good enough fit. So the next thing to do is, uh, is use it in anger. Uh, I may have to put some tape in here just to pack that out a little bit. Uh, we'll just have to see about that one. I think it should be all right, but uh, it's one of those things that when, when uh, doing this, as I said uh, previously, I, I possibly could have had a bit more um, card in there to just sort of pack that out. Uh, but uh, when I get a bit of tube out, it, it does clamp, so that's, uh, that's good. So as part of the uh, work to make this truss, I've scalloped the ends here uh, and, this, and the reason for that is, rather than just doing my, my 30 degree trick, is that I want to pass cables through the bottom of the truss. And so I need to have that uh, basically unobstructed. So the bottom channel is, uh, is, is going to be unobstructed. And I thought, well, if I'm doing one, then I might as well do the other. So I've done that. And so that will sit on the, the bottom rail and the top rail will be on a very slight angle. I'll, I'll be able to fill that without any dramas. Um, now I've also got some triangular pieces in between and so on the bottom I'm putting a scallop like that and that'll go on there at 45 degrees. I can weld around there and that'll, that'll be good. On the other end I'll use the uh, drilling jig that I've made uh, and just pop a hole in the, uh, in the tube and then just, I can just slide that in and everything will be wonderful there. I can weld around there. So that's, that's why that, uh, that jig. Now to get that, that's a diameter 25 um, hole but on a 45 degree angle. So I've got my uh, collet block set up here and I'm just using a hole saw to just go down there very gently. Uh, it's a little bit nerve wracking because I keep looking over here while I'm standing back to check that I haven't run into the table. But apart from that, um, it, it seems to be working. This is the last one to do. Uh, I've got them sort of identified so I know which, which lengths are what. I was looking around for a way to hold these tubes so that um, you know I had a close fitting joint, which is pretty important for, for welding thin gauge stuff, um, and uh, you know just keeping it in one spot. Now normally I'd, I'd use clamps and blocks of material or something, but I discovered in a catalogue one of these things. This is made by Stronghand; they're not sponsored, but this is 
a fixture which is designed for doing this and I can adjust the angle there this is set up on a 90 at the moment but later on I'll have that slightly more or less um, and uh, I'm, I'm really liking this it's uh, the only the only criticism I have it is that the the screws that hold the um, pliers onto the the base here uh, had a uh, number three Phillips head in it and uh, so I just swapped those out for some uh, hex socket heads uh, a bit easy to tighten up with the with the bolt in the way but other than that uh, it's uh, it's doing wonderful things not sponsored but it's a a decent tip if you have to do this sort of stuff um, you know they you can get things like this which makes the job a whole lot easier there's also a fixed 90 degree version too if you're only ever doing 90 degrees but this is a little bit more versatile even if it's a bit more mucking around So as you can see, uh, around about halfway along, this tube is actually um, three degrees out of parallel with this one. So when I'm drilling that at 45, it's not actually, um, you know, it should be a little bit more, but that gives me a little bit of spring so I can wedge this in. Um, so I'm doing two at once because it just makes it a little bit easier for drilling the holes and then welding. But apart from that, it's, it's, it's going well. This is the short of the, uh, the two trusses. Uh, and this is just a bit of aluminium tube, 25 diameter, as the truss is. And so uh, I've got two four-inch G-clamps here. And I'm just going to hang them on there, as, use them as a weight. And you can see that the, the tube there has deflected um, a little bit. And the truss it still has deflected, but you can see from the from difference in levels that the tube um, has deflected quite a bit more than the than the, than the truss has, uh, and even from the, the you know the, the bouncing up and down, uh, that's not as stiff as that is. So there you go. That's a, that's a truss. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you for the next one.